today we're going to talk about the Oric One. Um, it's not a massively popular machine by any stretch of the imagination. It was only produced for uh, about 18 to 20 months or so in reality production run because I had initial problems getting it out and so on. And then it went to the Oric Atmos. And um, the Atmos was literally just um, a repackaged computer and you can see why because the keyboard on the Oric is arguably a lot worse than the ZX Spectrum behind but you can see the size difference between the two machines the Oric wasn't particularly a big machine but at the end of the day it was a lot bigger than the ZX Spectrum and that's I think that's why they decided to replace the case and keyboard with a more of a full travel typewriter style keyboard but that's not what we're here for we're not here to do a history lesson on these what I'm going to do today is um, have a look at the this Oric one because it is broken it doesn't work it fills the screen full of rubbish and um, it really needs looking at and one thing you might find with the Oric is that parts are fairly difficult to get hold of now um, especially the more proprietary parts such as the ULAs and it's a machine that ha wasn't particularly massively popular and from a collector's point of view as well there's there's not a massive amount or massive range of software around but it's a good machine to have and it'd be nice to have this one up and running so this is part one this is the diagnostics and what I intend to do is um use basic tools again because a lot of people out there don't haven't got access or don't have access to oscilloscopes and so on and basically a lot of enthusiasts want to get these machines running so what we're going to do is going to inspect it with literally just what you have on your fingers and also a multimeter to find out what's going on and for most faults on this rather simply put together machine um, that's really all you need so let's have a look okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to take hold of the power lead uh, which is here on the original auric power supply and what you need to do is literally check the voltage out of this thing um, and find out what's going on so we're just going to find out what voltage this is putting out and if you have a quick look it's not bad it's under 12 um, the regulator on this machine can handle that without too many problems but um, the power supply is 30 odd years old so I'm gonna basically unplug this one and use a modern power supply so here we have the original Oric one and you just saw the voltage it was putting out and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to replace it with the modern power supply. So I'm just going to pop this in now and we're going to do exactly the same test. And as you can see it's not far away so the Oric power supply is actually in quite good condition but again it is getting on a bit so we're going to use this brand new power supply. Okay, so plugging the machine in, we get just a screen full of garbage, basically, and that's all you get. You also get a high pitched sound, which we'll come to in a minute. The only thing we can do with this machine is um, take it apart and have a look, see what's going on with it. The Oric one is very simple to take apart, you've only got three screws three screws and then you lift the bottom away um, which is what we're going to do now so just back off all the screws take them away from the threads And then hopefully you should just be able to lift it off and then that's your Oric One exposed. There's not a lot to it, 
and you've got your basic your speaker your 6502A and you've got a little bit of logic swing here and you've also got your memory okay and um, on this machine you have a ULA um, which is this one and this is the part that's very hard to get hold of so I'm hoping that this isn't causing the problem and you also have a, a double 2A here which is a 6522A and that's just basically a controller and um, you know it, it basically helps run the board itself okay they're, they're not easily obtainable um, but they're a little bit more easily obtainable than this thing and then you have your AY sound chip which is here okay so the, the basic premise of the board isn't that much away from a Sinclair ZX Spectrum for example so we're just going to turn it on so you can hear that noise that happens when you turn this machine on okay so we just turned it on and that's the noise you can hear it's definitely coming from the speaker so what we're going to do is first off we're going to find out what's causing the problem now the easiest thing to do is to use your finger so we're going to let it run for a minute or two and let things get a little bit warm okay to find out if there's any chips that aren't doing what they should be doing now it's not something i would normally do is let the machine kind of heat up but um sometimes you have to but also this machine's been used pre previously to um i got it so it's actually been on and tested it was basically sold as a non-running machine and the screen is actually still full of rubbish but it's now black and white rubbish so to me that initially says that this may be not at fault because you shouldn't get much of an output whatsoever if that um, ULA wasn't working properly so we're gonna let it warm up for a minute or two and immediately this is getting warmer than it should do so I'm going to turn the machine off and we're going to check some voltages out in a second okay I'm just going to let it get back to the normal temperature we don't stress it too much and we're going to just try a few obvious things that you know might be causing the problem now one of the strangest things on the um, auric is that this little regulator here is minus five it pulls low which is odd because most of them pull high which is a little weird because normally they're, they're around about the plus five not the negative five And this one is pulling, yeah, it's pulling negative five, so which is a bit odd. So we're going to check the pin on the processor. It's, it's a bit low on the voltage, it's 2.3. This one's 2.7. The sound chip's fine. Okay, so that's a bit odd. So we're going to try the ULA 1.65 and 3.7. So that, that's a bit closer than a whereabouts it should be. But the, the fact that, yeah, this um, regulator is mainly the, the culprit. Okay, so we have a regulator which isn't working properly and the reason that is because it should be on the the minus or pulling it low and it's not it's barely pulling it low at just over one or just under one volt 
So which means that all the other chips on here are only pulling one volt. But the strangest thing is, is this SY22A is also only pulling one volt, but it's getting warm. So initially it seems that the regulator is at fault. Now pulling low isn't really going to cause any real damage to the board, which is um, a good thing. But the, the strangest thing is that this is getting warm as well. Looking at this machine, we've got a regulator that's pulling too low. You've got 22A, which is strangely getting warm. Um, there's got to be a short inside it. Got to be a short inside of that processor. Um, it's just a controller chip, so it's um, you know it's just full of gates, which is fine. Your ULA and your memory is working fine, or it appears to be working fine from basic tests, and there's also no heat problems with it, even though it's now been on for a little while. So this is getting warmer by the minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the regulator now with um, everything being switched on for a little while because a lot of the times when they start failing they, they change their voltages. Okay, so we're, we're getting the same. So it looks like the regulator is partly to blame for this, um, which is almost certainly why this 22 here, which is um, getting warm, whereas everything else seems to be getting not quite enough voltage to run them. It's quite an odd fault. Um, not one that hasn't happened before but basically the first point of call on this machine is change this desolder this replace that just to make sure the um, the 22a let's get rid of that and put a brand new one in and then that should make it work because the ULA if it was faulty wouldn't have allowed any sort of display because it's the, the main glue for the machine. Um, you wouldn't actually get anything at all on display if this was completely faulty. So that's where I'm going to. So this Auric One is a little bit a little bit on the ill side. So alas poor Auric. Pardon the puns. Um, it's gonna have to have some parts ordered for it. So this is where we are with part one of the Auric One saga. And um, they're quite basic machines. You can diagnose them with a basic multimeter. Um, and all you need to do is just follow the diagram. But remember, this, even when working, pulls on the minus, it pulls on the low side, which is quite odd. So I'm guessing a lot of people in the past have probably replaced this little device, this little regulator, because they thought it was pulling low when it should have been around about the 5 volts or plus 5 volts. So that's one to watch out for if you're going to try and do this machine yourself. The um, 6522A, really that was used in a lot of Commodore machines anyway, the, so that's easy enough or should be easy enough to salvage from another machine if I can't get hold of a new one. Um, 65028, eh? well, it's everywhere and uh, it's just a standard off-the-shelf 65028. Eh? It hasn't been modified like the ones used in the Commodore 64s 
or the 16s and basically near enough every Commodore machine that they produced. So again, quite standard off the shelf, you know, you could probably even possibly raid it out of a, a broken BBC Micro or Acorn Electron if you can't get hold of one, but they should be available. Now, this I see here appears to be functioning fine. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if we can get a replacement for the HCS 10017 because they do fail and they fail quite regularly in these machines and um, they're kind of a bone of contention. So I'm going to try and find out if you can get hold of these. Um, I'm sure I've seen a few for sale so I'm going to order one anyway. So my parts list for this machine, just to be on the safe side, I know that's faulty, so I'm going to get the SY 22A. I'm going to get that one replaced. I'm going to have this regulate voltage regulator replaced, as just as a matter of course, because it's pulling too low. Um, and I'm also going to order a ULA. None of the memory chips seem to be causing any issues, so you know that would have been my first port of call really for scramble screen which is what I kind of initially thought it was before I opened the case and uh, that was the sound on the speaker but it was to say the uh, 522 getting hot it's a bit of a giveaway so what we're going to do is going to order the parts I'm going to do a part one on this and um, in between that we're going to do a feature on the Oracle Tangerine Micros or Tangerine Computers as they were called at one point um, because they're a local company. They were actually based in Cambridgeshire and they were based just down the road here um, on Techno Park and they also had offices in Ely which again is only a 15 minute drive away so they were again, it's another Cambridgeshire based company and uh, so I'm going to do a, a little bit of a, a feature on them while we're waiting for the parts for these. So this is your Oric 1, Stage 1, how to fix. Okay, so there was a great look at um, an Oric 1. It wasn't meant to be an in-depth thing. Originally I wasn't going to video it at all, but I thought, you know what, well, some people might have one of these floating around and it might be nice for them to crack it open and find out if they, they can find the problem. So if you start with the basics, if you start with the voltage regulator and it's not pulling the, the voltage it should do, then it kind of means that something along the line here is going to be overheating or is going to be, for want of a better term, fried. So on this case, the, um, the controller was basically red hot and um, that's a giveaway that's a giveaway I mean with just turn it on within minutes that was a giveaway anyway so that would have had to have been replaced as a matter of course along with the reg regulator but I decided to check the voltage out across the board and for some reason everything else on the board was being pulled low I mean you know you're talking 1.2 1.1 volts in a lot of these cases so they're way below where they should have been so that means that this entire regulator is basically beyond repair it needs to be replaced so and that's using just a basic multimeter and that's all you need just follow the schematics okay this was just a, a quick you can do it with the multimeter and I'm going to order the parts to make it work so it's a very very quick and dirty look at how to diagnose a basic fault on a one of these microcomputers, one of these classic machines, but it wouldn't have made any difference if it was a radio or a, a VCR or anything else. You, the, the process is very much the same. So at the end of the day this Auric is very poorly um, and it needs to be repaired and that's what I'm going to do in my next video as soon as I get the party. It might be a little bit of a gap because I'm going to try and get hold of a ULA, not because this one's faulty, but I'd like to know if the copy ones that are out there are any good, because there are a couple of places in Europe that have actually produced 
copies of these because the Atmos and the Oric one was cloned in a lot of countries okay same as the ZX Spectrum was as well and the 81 so I'm going to try and get hold of a ULA and I'll probably end up pulling um, the little controller chip out of another machine if I can't get hold of one because they're basically the same and we're going to go from there as you can see it's one of the earlier Oryx with the single ROM in there but um, you know it had a socket to allow it to upgrade it to the later Atmos ROM so I hope you enjoyed this quick overview and um, you know get your own machine out buy a cheap multimeter find out what's going on with them as best as your ability if it's broken it's broken you know you might surprise yourself and think oh hang on it's the 6502 or it's whichever chips faulty or getting hot or having too much voltage sent to it and so on so have a go have a bit of fun with them rather than leaving them what the worst that can happen is you're going to end up but having it still a broken computer the best that can happen is you've rescued one so have a go and um, see how you get on okay the oscilloscope's coming out next time once i fix this machine so we can see what each individual chip is doing and especially this little sound chip be nice to see that generating its square waves on a screen so let's look forward to the next part thanks for watching thanks for listening and i hope you enjoyed this and um, hope you'll subscribe because we've got a lot more in the future not just repairs but other programs on the rise and fall of the microcomputer all the way through to the modern day when I eventually get through the 8-bit and the 16-bit era, we'll get through to the modern day, but that might be a little bit down the line, okay? But um, thank you.